I want to talk about the Democrats being driven insane. I want to talk about how Twitter is making the left go crazy, at least the political left. And then ultimately, I don't know what's happening. What, what's happened to the Democrats? And I got a bunch of examples of even presidential candidates getting woke. And I'm going to say it, although it's not monetary, the Democrats are getting woke and going broke. And what better example than a former Democratic congressional candidate getting arrested on battery charges? Because after she loses several years later, she throws a, a drink, presumably a milkshake at the person she lost to. Welcome back, Andrew says. Remember, I wouldn't lie to you, except for maybe this once. I came to a realization after watching all the DNC debates and everything that it's sort of like a circle of life. It's a circle of things that we say we're going to do and don't actually do just so everybody can feel good. It's progressive media with no real substance, and that sort of feeds to viewers. And then the viewers demand certain things of the candidates. They demand, like, the health care, the immigration reform, the, I don't know what else, the refugees. <laughs> I don't really know what else they're promising other than free things. And then, well, of course, the identity politics. They're demanding that. So the politicians put this identity politics and these new socialist things at the forefront of their campaigns. And they put these platitudes over their policy. And, of course, nothing ever gets done. And then they wonder why people leave for more right-wing or more left-wing stuff. And you saw it all day in the DNC debates. You saw it. And it makes you wonder who, who are they playing towards. So this is how I think the votership breaks down for them. The viewers, the viewers of this stuff are woke teenagers. You can't vote, okay? They want the radical environmentalist change. They want the radical health care change. They want all this stuff to change seemingly overnight or else the world's going to come to an end. You've got the passing viewers of entertainment who may or may not vote, but they're watching the SNLs, they're watching Vox and BuzzFeed and stuff, and they don't really care about politics, but it's been injected so much forcefully into the entertainment that uh, they've developed some of these views. And then there's people who believe in the surface arguments. They're the people who are watching CNN, MSNBC, and maybe some, some of their favorite Elizabeth Warrens and stuff like that, and they're seeing them um, give these arguments that the politicians know they're not going to do, but they're they're saying it to, you know, appease the viewers. And then you have the last legitimate voters. That's the last section, the legitimate voters who actually do want to see these things done over time. Maybe they want to switch to green energy slowly, or they think that the U.S. economy can handle uh, subsidized health care and, and free tuition and things like that. Those are the people you want to speak to, but everybody else is just free college, free everything, you know, they're going Oprah at them. And this leaves just a couple possibilities. One, these people do not really understand what's going on. They're all the passers by, you can lump them into one, one sort of clump of people because they think the media is representative of reality. What they're getting is what's actually going to happen or they, they don't pay attention enough to not know that, hey, it's not that, uh, it's not that these evil people want to stop it. It's just that it was never on the table at all. So that's one side of it. And why would they believe such a thing? It's because I believe the media's whole reality, their whole purpose these days, is to sort of justify their viewpoint. It's not to, and this is, of course, speaking to the major corporations, the Foxes, the CNNs, MSNBC, NBC, ABC. Their job is no longer to show you what the news is. Their job is to justify their ideas and make it seem as if their ideas are the overwhelming majority. So we're just battling against the enemy here. And I found, and you've probably found this as well, that very liberal people are like, they're basically like vegans and CrossFitters now. They need you to know, they need to push this into every, <laughs> every facet of life that they can. They need you to know who they are. They need you to know that they hate Trump or how terrible the police are, and they're so in their social media bubble or their social bubble that they think everyone agrees with them. Why wouldn't you only eat plants, okay? You're a monster if you don't. Not knowing that, okay, plants can think and feel as well, scientifically proven, or CrossFit's the only way to do it, and if you don't want to do one of these push-ups or the pull-ups where you're going like this, 
then you don't really know anything about fitness. So they really can't help themselves. And these people are part of the audience that are believing these surface arguments, and they can't understand why anybody else would disagree with them. And it's causing people to go insane and act very violent, and it's getting worse and worse because they think that, I don't know, fascism is really on the rise in America, and beating up Nazis is a real thing, and they think this is a popular and trendy thing to do because they're seeing, they're not seeing anyone uh, disavow it. They're not seeing anyone say, hey, no, there isn't this fascism. It's, uh, yes, white nationalism and fascism and totalitarianism. Totalitarian, yeah, they're on the rise. And by the way, the world's ending in 12 years if we don't do anything about climate change.